Hey everyone, oh, welcome back to my channel. It's been forever since I posted a, a video at all. I think it's been over nine months since I posted my last gaming video and three years since I posted an eczema video. So I figured it's the month of October, which is eczema aware this month, and I wanted to share some tips, um, some new products I use to help treat my eczema and just talk about a couple of flare-ups um, or basically like potential triggers and what you can do to maybe help treat it uh, just as a um, forewarning. This is all personally what has been working for me lately. Might not necessarily work for you depending on your skin type and a bunch of other factors. So definitely not trying to give out any medical advice or anything like that so literally this is just coming from my own experience and what i've learned about living with this condition for so long yeah it's been like i've had this since i was probably actually younger than 10 years old anyways so there are some products i wanted to share first that i use so this first one's gonna be Vaseline uh, clinical care. It has it's eczema calming. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm going to try my best to uh, show this product. Now I can probably um, uh, record like another separate thing to show you guys, but basically, it is a therapy cream. It's eczema calming. So basically, you can use as much of this as you want and I use it to moisturize everywhere and I think in my previous video, I mentioned using Gold Bond. So that's an old one, I don't use that anymore. I actually use this, it's actually more effective in my opinion. Um, it relieves itching and irritation, it's hypoallergenic, um, it has colloidal oatmeal, which is a common ingredient they use in uh, products to treat eczema so that's always cool what's good is that you basically it doesn't really have much of a um, sticky or off gross feeling you get sometimes from like certain moisturizers and even though it says Vaseline like I know like actual Vaseline can be kind of gooey and kind of sticky and feel kind of gross but this actually feels really nice I've gone um, like, as you can see I'm almost through this bottle I have to get another one you can get it from Target. I forget for how much, but like it's really good. One of my friends uh, recommended this to me, so uh, very good. And it's fragrance free; it doesn't smell like anything, so you're you're set. You're pretty much set when you use this. So that's that's one that I use all the time. Um, it doesn't. Uh, I should say it does not um, make it go away as a disclaimer oh that's what i was looking for disclaimer not a forewarning just a disclaimer that um this doesn't actually obviously doesn't cure it a lot of things that don't cure it there is no cure for it there's just ways of treating it so this is just a way to keep your skin moisturized so it doesn't get dry because the main thing about this is that once our skin gets dry that's when it starts flaring up and i'll get back into that later assuming i can remember but that's one product I use. Uh, so this is another one that one of my coworkers recommended to me. It's called O'Keefe's uh, Working Hands. It's a night treatment. So it's a lotion that you can put on your hands specifically at night and it keeps them moisturized throughout the night. And it's got a little bit of a sticky feeling afterwards, but overall it's not too bad. It feels pretty good also, it's pretty light. Uh, this is, um, it smells like essential oils of some sort. They do put um, deep conditioning oils in here. So just as a, as a uh, heads up that if your skin is already kind of allergic to certain essential oils or anything that's scented at all this is lightly scented so just letting you know that if this doesn't work you can go back to this cool and then the last um thing i wanted to share was glad skin so it's basically 
it's a cream and it just pumps out it's just like a tiny it's like a thing you just pump it out like like this and it comes out like that it's just white or whatever you can add it to any any part and supposedly it's um well it's hypoallergenic and they don't use any types of steroids in it so it's no fragrance no parabens no preservatives, no steroids, um, no alcohols, and no sulfates. So it's completely, uh, like, doesn't have any of that. And so basically what they talk about on their site, because this is something I found recently, so I've still been kind of experimenting with it, is that it has like this uh, micro balance kind of system where you stick it on your skin and it's supposed to kind of balance the I guess bacteria on your skin balance it back to normal so that way it doesn't flare up as much uh, so I've been kind of just using this trying to use this because I've been using uh, oftentimes when you get uh, diagnosed with eczema they'll, they will automatically um, prescribe topical steroids to treat it and as I said before and I will say again topical steroids are not good for using long term you know I've used it long term yes they do uh, get the flare-ups like to disappear within a few days so you get really quick results from it it's the quickest thing it's very powerful stuff but there's a lot of side effects that come with it. Your skin will uh, continue to get thinner the more you use it, as mine has, and eventually it will uh, get very thin and easily be able to be um, not penetrable, but like easily, uh, it's easy for it to get cracked and easy for it to, again, like if you scratch again, you can get infections, things like that. So it, it kind of destroys the layer after a while. Your layer won't be the same over time. So this is kind of a way, an alternative um, for that. So you can kind of see if it works for you. I'm still testing it. So far my skin hasn't reacted to it, which is good. So I haven't broken out more. So I'll have to see how using this will go. Um, but yeah, those are the three main things I use right now. I still do occasionally go back to my steroids if I really need to. Um, if it gets really bad, because sometimes it, it does get really bad and I have to resort back to it. But I am like trying to essentially wean myself off of it so I don't get used to using it and then eventually not use it at all. Um, but this is a good, these are good products to use. So the main things I learned were to basically keep your skin as moisturized as possible. And with me being in the job that I'm in, I use my hands a lot and I have to wash my hands a lot because again, like I, I touch money. I touch money, so much money and it's gross. You know, I have to wash my hands all the time, which leads me to, uh, leads them uh, to getting like really dry. Um, so I usually use this mainly when I'm at work, even though it says night treatment, <laughs> I use it during the day too. I always have to use it. And then I find that whenever I um, do that, it doesn't quite flare up as badly. So if I keep up that uh, regimen, then it'll be okay. Um, another tip I have is that if you're not doing so already, um, Wear gloves if you can, especially now with all the crazy illness going around and all that craziness. Uh, I find that gloves really help when I wear them at work. That way it reduces hand washing, so that way I don't have to wash them as often. Uh, it does take a while to get used to. Um, and I wear them uh, when I wash my hair in the shower. That way my hands don't come in contact with any chemicals in the in the uh, shampoo and the conditioner that I use. Otherwise that'll end up resulting in a flare up also. Um, let's see. Overall, it's still like it's it's in a manageable state, but it's not obviously not completely cured. And as I said before, 
uh, there are a lot of different potential triggers for it and a lot of things that can cause it to flare up, especially um, when the weather changes. So right now it's shifting into fall weather. So shifting from really hot weather to like now cold weather, which is not fun at all. <laughs> my skin's reacting so bad right now. You might, not, might not be able to tell on camera right now, but my, my skin is acting up pretty bad. Um, so I've had to adjust to that. Uh, stress is another big one. I've had to manage my stress in different ways. I think that um, even right now, because obviously with COVID, it's like you have to take the precautions and meeting with people and stuff like that. But just being able to talk to friends or family, um, maybe get together occasionally for like any kind of activity that you that you feel comfortable with has been really good for not only uh, like physically seeing them, but also my like mental health and my mental state because that's another really um big thing with it is that your mental health is like really important when it comes to this like it's not all just physical triggers it's also how you how your mental state is so if you're really like mm, like really stressed out then of course your skin's gonna react in like to that it's gonna react to stress you know and we we'll all be stressed but i mean just doing something to kind of de-stress yourself is really good so what i do is that i either game or i i've been trying to get back into yoga to see if i can kind of de-stress myself in that way it's really good too um just keep in mind that whatever you end up doing could potentially uh, trigger in other ways. So like if you do really high cardio exercise, you get sweaty, just make sure you take a shower afterwards. And then just don't shower in boiling hot water because like I understand that you want to like, you want to shower in, the hot, in really hot water because I shower in the hot water, but I had to tame it down because again, it dries out your skin. You know, I have to make sure I moisturize afterwards and everything like that. Um, another thing I learned was that I started using a humidifier again because I had it away for the summertime but now that fall and winter are coming up I'm definitely going to keep it in my room because things are going to get more dry and it's going to get cold yeah cold and dry so I recommend a humidifier and an air purifier it's so funny I have like three different machines running in my room right now. I have an air purifier and I have a humidifier to keep it kind of moist in here. Um, that way you can kind of keep the moisture in. It won't get so dry. Your skin won't get dried out. Um, and the probably the number one tip that everyone's going to talk about and everyone will tell you to do is to drink plenty of water because water is like that's a way you can cleanse your system from within and also just keep yourself hydrated. That's the most important thing, I think. Those are the products I use. Those are the kind of the tips that I had, like, for treating it. I think those are some main things to really remember. And this is definitely something that will be ongoing. I'm trying to think if I've actually learned anything else in addition in the three year period that I've had it. It kind of shifts. Like I said, like, yeah, yeah, it shifts. And depending on the season, it will shift to various places. And I found that there are certain things I can do in order to help it a lot, I guess. So for example, during summertime, I had really bad eczema, like on my eyelids, it was all over, it was like on my face. It still is on my face, but not as bad as before. But like it was on my face, it was on the sides of literally like my whole face was just like breaking out. And then my eyelids just everywhere was just dry and I couldn't figure out how to treat it. So I started with 
I actually started with really really focusing on exfoliating washing my face but I had to use a really gentle cleanser so here's another product that I recommend in case you want to like wash your face with something that's not too harsh on skin it would be uh, it was Cetaphil Cetaphil? I think it was Cetaphil um, hydrating facial cleanser it's like a day cleanser it comes in like a white bottle with a green label on it I wish I had it here with me but I don't but it really works well for cleaning um, your skin so I had to do that for a couple of days consistently in order to get um, one all of the allergens out of my face and then to try to basically just clean off gently and then I used this on my face why because I don't like using topical steroids on my face. That's not where you're supposed to put it. You're not supposed to be using it on your face. I have used it on my face before. It's not a very good idea, especially on your eyelids because your eyelids are like a really sensitive spot. So I rather use this. This you can use as much as you want on your face. At least for me, it worked out. I didn't react to it. I didn't break out to it. I'm not saying that that's not gonna happen. So there's always this like test a small spot first before you decide to glob all this all over your face. That's never a good idea, don't do it. Because you might have an allergic reaction to it, no one knows. Um, but so far, this has been safe to use in my face, so I use this. And it seems to work. Uh, I will say this, that since it's not, it doesn't have steroids in it, the results are very, they're very slow. They feel really slow because steroids work within like a day, like one or two days I start you already start seeing improvement but with this it takes longer like I found it takes maybe like a week or two to start seeing results that you would see from steroids in like two two days or three days because the formula is different and it's not going to be harming your skin in the process while it's healing itself because I found that whenever I use steroids um the work and then as soon as I stop using it it comes back so it forces me to kind of hang on to it and kind of cling to it and I don't want to keep doing that so yeah uh, definitely recommend looking into this I will put a link to these products down in the description so that way you kind of know um, where to find them what else I actually will say what you eat is very important too because as a lot of people who have studied this condition is that it's very dependent on your gut health and what goes on all in here because what you eat will react or make your you know your skin will react to what you eat kind of like how when you drink a ton of water, you won't get dehydrated. You'll hydrate your skin and your skin will look a lot better. Same thing with the food you eat. So I found that for me, I can't eat a lot of fried foods as much as I like them a lot. I try to stay away from fried foods because then I start breaking out. Not even just like eczema wise, but like I'll get like pimples and stuff too. So I try to avoid fried foods. Um, Anything that has the potential to make me break out, like eggs are a big one for whatever reason. Um, eggs trigger it, so I don't eat a lot of eggs. Cause one time I went on this weird, uh, like spree of eating eggs, like boiled eggs, every single day. I don't know why. I just ate one for breakfast every single day and it messed up my skin after a while. I flared up so bad and I was just thinking, alright, I think it's the eggs. I need to lay off the eggs now. So I can still eat them. I just have to eat them in moderation. So it's important to kind of log certain foods. If you find that your eczema flares up after eating something, then kind of, you know, cut back on it a little bit, see if your condition improves. And then if it does, then you know, okay, I don't need to, you know, splurge on, you know, I don't need to, like, eat this food, like, a whole ton. Like, 
uh, what do you call that? Binge eat? Yeah, binge eat on it. Yeah, that's not a good idea. But yeah, this is how I've been basically treating it so far. It's, yeah, it's in a manageable state right now. So hopefully these tips and my updates on the products I use helped. And hopefully uh, as I kind of learn more about the products I have been using and research more on like potential other products, then I can start using those and then kind of see how I can continue treating this. But yeah, for now, this is what I'm dealing with right now. But hopefully this helped someone out there. If it didn't, that's okay. You know, it's fine. There's a lot of different resources out there. There's a lot of different um, people who have also researched way more into depth on this condition that I have. And they'll probably have a ton more information on it and a ton more of like tips and things you can do in order to treat it. So hopefully these these products work for you. If they don't, definitely don't give up. Keep looking around. I'm sure you'll find something that will work. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's been great to be able to talk to you guys again and to basically just kind of update you guys a little bit on what's been going on. I'll definitely be on again soon to make another video or I guess update video on my life and what's been going on. Um, but for now, yeah, um, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.